Hey folks, it's uh, Brian C., your Marion County Extension Agent, and today I want to talk to you all about uh, fly control, uh, horn fly specifically on beef cattle. And uh, fly season is coming up, and so it's something that we all need to be thinking about and planning for. And basically, uh, what we want to look for is uh, flies to be reaching uh, a threshold of 150 to 200 and those will uh, those numbers will be accumulated on the uh, back and sides and and flanks of the of the beef cattle and so uh, I'm going to include a picture of uh, our drawing of those different numbers to kind of give you an idea and we'll also we'll also reference a fact sheet that you can look at that helps you to estimate the number of flies on the cattle. And uh, we're going to talk also talk about a couple different ways to control flies. So basically we have uh, probably the first and most effective method is applying insecticide by hand to the cattle. And <clears throat> this can be done pretty easily if your cattle are gentle. It's something that you can get them acclimated to. If you have a large, large herd, then this can be a little more difficult to handle or to actually do. But if you can apply uh, insecticide uh, according to the label um, uh, to the livestock as needed, um, then that is probably one of the most effective ways to do it. Now you can do it with a high pressure, uh, you know, uh, like a washer, pressure washer uh, that isn't, you know, with the insecticide being mixed in with the water. Um, but then that can get uh, a little bit difficult to apply and manage. Um, but basically what you want to do is wait until the uh, livestock go, the, the fly numbers get to 150 or 200 of that threshold and then treat. Um, so that, that is a method that works well um, if it can work out for you logistically. Uh, Probably the second uh, best option that, uh, that you can look into is the um, ear tags that are impregnated with the insecticide. And uh, what you want to do again is wait until the flies, uh, the fly numbers build up to about 150 to 200. And then you uh, put the ear tag in the, uh, the animal's ears. Um, and uh, you can read the directions on whether you use one or two and, and the pros and cons to that. Uh, but what you want to do is, you know, periodically keep an eye on them uh, and, you know, do a fly count. And once the numbers start to build up again to threshold, then you'll want to do, uh, get the cattle up and remove those ear tags. Uh, in general, you'll get, you know, about three months uh, of control out of the ear tags. Um, and to back up for just a minute on the spray, um, you know, kind of like I said, the, follow the label instructions and don't apply more than it says. Um, but, you know, generally you're looking at, uh, you know, weekly uh, to every two weeks application on that. And, you know, rainfall and uh, rain events and things like that can, can affect that as well. But, uh, the third option uh, is... Uh, uh, dust bags and uh, rubs and these actually work well uh, too uh, maybe even uh, might e maybe even better than the ear tags I might actually wanted to put that before the ear tags but um, they work well but the catch is is that you have to put them in a place where the animals you know are becoming to water or mineral or something like that daily um, or at least, you know, every other day or so. And then, of course, you have to keep 
a little bit of maintenance up on those, keep the insecticide on them, but it applies the insecticide, you know, as the animal goes to water or mineral, and um, that is really is a good way to uh, control flies as well. Um, another option is the uh, IGR minerals, or um, you can put an additive in to um, uh, feed or something like that, and they also make a bolus, actually, that you can put in, and you'll get, oh, I think it's 150, excuse me, days, excuse me, uh, something like that for, of control on, uh, for flies with the bolus. But um, what that basically is, is it uh, breaks up the life cycle of the fly and uh, it helps to uh, keep the numbers down by preventing uh, you know, new hatchings of, of uh, uh, flies and interrupting generation. Uh, and that can work real well. But where you run into problems is if you have a fence line between you and a neighbor, and you're controlling your flies uh, with this product, but they are not, then you can have flies that are coming from your neighbors onto yours. And so you kind of have to work together um, to control, to get that uh, to work well. But if you can get that worked out, or if you have isolated herd, then you know, we've seen good uh, results with the IGR mineral and products. So that's something to consider as well. If you're going to do the mineral, uh, that is something that you do not wait until you get to threshold. You actually would start to feed it now before uh, the fly season really gets rolling and because you want to kind of head them off and uh, go ahead and get that, uh, that product in the uh, fed and in the, in the mix of things. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to visit with you all about flies and that's uh, kind of one of those things that's coming up that we need to be thinking about. And if you have any questions, as always, you can call here at the office at 870-449-6349. And you know, keep an eye on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and um, like and follow us. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you all, and we'll see you next time.